Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel if you're new here. Today's ship build is a ship I've featured on my channel before, but I have not done a build video for it. It's usually in the background of my intros. This is my battleship, the USS Warchild. This is a companion ship to the HMS Strongbow build that I've posted a while ago. But where the Strongbow focused on cargo, the Warchild focuses more on general utility. It still has a large cargo capacity, with little over 16,000 cargo in 760 shielded cargo, but I added a little bit more HABs and a higher crew capacity. It also features two sets of auto cannons and six obliterator particle beam weapons, so it is well protected if trouble comes knocking. Now, since this is a Class C ship, you will need your piloting and starship design skills at rank four and be at least level 60 to access all the parts. You also need to complete the All That Money Can Buy quest in order to have access to the engines. Now to get the most out of this ship, I would also recommend leveling your payload skill, automated weapon skill, shield system skill, and ship command skill. So let's walk through how to build the ship, but before we get into the build, a disclaimer. These builds are designed to serve as general guides for shipbuilding. You can follow these builds exactly or use them as inspiration for your own designs. If there are design elements that you feel could be improved or other parts you prefer to use, feel free to modify the build however you like. Let your creativity run wild. Now let's start the build. We're starting on New Atlantis as we always do. We're gonna be visiting a few systems in this build. New Homestead in the Soul System, Neon in the Valai System, and our Outpost in the Schrodinger System. While on New Atlantis, let's get a ship to build off of. If you already have a ship, you can skip this step. Talk to the ship technician and see what he has for sale. Pick up the least expensive ship they have to offer, which is usually the Rambler. Now that we have our ship, we're heading over to the Soul System next, and we're gonna land at New Homestead on Titan. Once on the ground, head over to the ship technician and select view and modify your ships. What we need from here are six of the NG-20 landing gears in the wide variant. So let's purchase those. Now that we have those, let's fit them on our ship. And now that the ship is flyable, let's head over to the Volai system and land on Neon. Once on the ground, head over to the Stroud Eklund showroom. Let's head in and interact with the panel on the wall and select view and modify your ships. We need a couple pieces from here, 
a Khan Tiki B600 bridge, our Sal 6830 engines, and the SF40 sheared flow reactor. So let's go ahead and purchase those. Now that we have our pieces, let's attach them to our ship. You can see that in order to attach our pieces, I needed a couple extra parts. I used the Stroud engine bracers to make it all fit. Now that everything's attached and the ship is flyable, it's off to our outpost to finish the build. Now, if you do not have an outpost, or you don't have one with a large landing pad on it, you can still build the ship. You just need to stop at a couple extra places first. The first stop you will need is the Red Mile on Parima 3 in the Parima system. This is the only place besides your outpost that you can get shielded cargo. Once on the ground, head over to the building and through the doors. Go into the office that's behind the desk and the ship technician will be in there. Talk to him and ask to view and modify your ships. What we're gonna need here are four of the 200 cm ballast shield cargo holds. Grab those and fit those to your ship. Once done, you can head over to Aquila City. All the rest of the parts will be available here. You can continue to follow along while we head over to our outpost. Now that we're back on our outpost, let's head over to the console at the end of the landing platform. Interact with it and select the option to view and modify your ship. I'll put the rest of the parts on screen. Pause the video here and let's get shopping. Yeah. 
And here's our layout. Make sure you take all the pieces that you purchased at your other stops off your ship and then just delete the rest. Now that we have everything, let's put our ship together. We're gonna start with our landing bay. So let's bring that over. Next, let's find our armory and attach that to the docking bay. Next, take your all-in-one and attach that to the back of the armory. Take a one by one and attach that to the top of your hook point of the all-in-one hab we just placed. Next, we're gonna move our two by ones over to where we will attach them. Start with the infirmary and that will go on the left side. Our control station will be next. Followed by our computer core. On the other side of the ship, start with the workshop. Then the living quarters. And finally, the captain's quarters. Now connect these tabs together in the order we place them. And now each hab structure will attach to the one by one hab at the back hook point. Next, take another one by one and that will go on top of the existing one by one hab. Take the engineering bay and attach the rear bottom hook point to the top of the one by one we just placed. Now let's take our final one by one and place that on top of the engineering bay on the back top hook point. And that is our hab layout. Take your bridge and attach that to the top of the one by one hab. Take your ship docker and bring it over. Flip it and this is going to go on the bottom rear center hook point of our tower structure. This should give us a central ladder in one location connecting the bridge to the ship docker. Now let's work on the back of the ship. Take an NG-20 landing gear and place one on each side of the tower structure under the 2x1 haps. Next, bring over two of the cargo holds. Attach one to the rear side hook point of our rear 2x1 hab. Take the other one and flip it so it's upside down and place that below the piece we just placed. Now let's do the same on the other side of the ship. Next, let's place our engines. We're going to place five in a row across the back. The last one is going to go just above the center engine attaching to the tower. Let's finish adding our landing gears. Take an NG-20 and place that under the ship just in front of the existing landing gear. 
Take a second one and place it in front of the one we just placed, but leaving a space in between. Next, take another cargo hold, flip it so it's upside down, and that's going to go under the ship in between the two landing gears. Take another one and place that on the opposite side of the front landing gear. So we should see gear, cargo, gear, then cargo. Let's repeat that on the other side of the ship. I made a mistake here by bringing over the other two gears instead of the cargo holds. That's okay, we're just gonna use those in a minute. These are the pieces I was looking for. Slide those under the ship. And we're all set. Now let's place those other landing gears. They're gonna go in front of the forward cargo hold. The slim side of the landing gear should be facing the outside of the ship. Now let's place our drive section. Take your fuel tank, grav drive, and reactor and combine them together in a straight line. This is gonna go in the center of the ship, just below the engineering bay. Make sure it's placed all the way to the back against the tower section. Next, take your Deimos hull piece and place that in the middle against the drive section. Now grab the Stroud braking engine and attach that to the front of the hull piece we just placed. Take your nose cap B and that's going to go in the center of the ship against the drive section. Next, take your TIO forward sensor, and that will attach to the end of the engineering bay. Now let's assemble the front horns of the ship. Take a Stroud cap A and flip it. Now take another one and place it on top. Let's create another one, but a mirror image of the last piece. These are going to attach to the front of the ship. The top hook points of the horn should attach to the hook points on the hab. Next, take your Stroud Cap C pieces and bring those to the back of the ship. These are going to attach to the rear hook points of the habs. The end of the cab should overlap the engine slightly. Next, take the Stroud Cowling 3LA pieces, and these are going to go just in front of the pieces we placed. Now let's take the remaining two Stroud Cap A pieces, and those are gonna go in front of the cowling pieces. The straight edge of the cap pieces should be facing inwards. Next, let's build our side structures. Take the pointed Nova cowling piece and attach that to the end of our Nova cowling structure. Now we have to make another one that's just a mirror image of the piece we just made. 
let's start by flipping the other straight cowling pieces so they're facing the opposite way. Now bring over your other pointed cowling piece and attach that to the end. These are going to go on the sides of the ship, attaching to the hook points of the hebs. Next, take your Demos Cowling 4 piece, and that will go on top of the engineering bay, just under the bridge. Now take your Hope Tech Nose B piece and bring that to the back of the ship. This is going to attach to the open hook point on the back of the tower section. Next, take your Teo side cap pieces, and these are going to attach to the sides of the engineering bay, three on each side. Take your Demos wing pieces, and these will attach the sides of the one by one just below the bridge. Now take your shield generator and attach that to the open hook point just in front of the cowling pieces on top of the engineering bay. Now, our shielded cargo holds are gonna go on the open hook points of our landing gears, two on each side of the ship. The last thing we need to place is our weapons. We have a slightly different array of weapons here than what I normally use. We have two sets of auto turrets, along with six obliterator forward facing cannons. Now, realistically, you can place these wherever you think works best for you, but here's how I place them on this build. We're gonna start with the PB300s. We're placing two on each side on top of our Stroud Cowling 3LA pieces. The cannons should be pointed out to the side. Next, we're going to place our other auto turrets. I went with the PBO 100 auto turrets here. I was gonna go with the Obliterator 250 MEV turrets, but you can only have three of those on a ship, and I like even numbers. So the PBOs were my next best option. I'm gonna start by placing two on the sides of the ship with the turret pointed out to the side, just in between the turrets we placed earlier. The last two are gonna be attached to the back of the ship on the rear facing cowling pieces. We're gonna to need to use our glitch trick to get them to fit, as for some reason they just don't like to attach here. To glitch it in place, we're gonna drag the piece over to where we want it. 
you will see it turn red. While holding your mouse button, flip the piece a few times till the turret is facing to the back of the ship. Now release your mouse button and click Escape. This should now place the piece where we want. You can do the same on Xbox by clicking Y to flip the piece and then B to cancel instead of using Escape. For the forward facing cannons, I place these on the side wings of the ship, three on each side. Now that the ship is assembled, we just need to assign our weapons. I'm going to assign my obliterates to the first slot, so they're on my left mouse button. The others can be assigned wherever you want, as they're auto cannons. Now let's rename our ship. And let's change out that factory color for something a little bit more interesting. And now our ship is assembled, and we can see our stats before crew and skill bonuses apply. And here are the stats after the crew and skill bonuses apply. So let's go take a tour of our new ship. Our landing bay is conveniently located right in the front of the ship, and it's easily accessible. Heading in brings us to our armory. We have plenty of storage for all of our weapons. Next, we have our all-in-one. This gives us quick access to a bed when we need to rest on a planet. Up one level brings us to our main hab floor. Through this door, we have our infirmary with our pharmaceutical and research stations. Up next, we have our control station. And finally, on the end, we have our computer core. Back out and over to the other side. We have our research station followed by our living quarters. And finally, our captain's quarters with the most uncomfortable looking bed ever. We also have Sarah and Sam just hanging out, staring at the wall. Not creepy at all. Let's head back out the other way. And up the ladder we go. The next level is just a one by one. The level after that is just the engineering bay, which really is not that interesting. The next level is another one by one. If for some reason our character just decides to get off the ladder here, I'm guessing this is the ladder book. And you just saw me fall all the way back down. That's embarrassing and dangerous at this height. Back up we go. And here we are on the bridge, finally. I like the layout of this bridge. It's spacious, but it feels like a Starship bridge, unlike the Hope Tech version. And that's the end of our video. 
please hit like and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. I'm Team Scorpio, and I'll see you in the next video.